All right, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, potentially Half Thor Bjornsson's next boxing opponent. So Half Thor and Tyson Fury have been going back and forth on Instagram, mostly via Instagram stories. And it looks like, and from what I'm hearing, this is like a legitimate conversation that's being had right now is Half Thor versus Tyson because it's, it's actually a relatively good matchup when you talk about size. And it's going to be an exhibition bout if it happens, so it's not going to actually count towards Tyson's record. And obviously Tyson is the more technically sound, more experienced, better boxer by far. But Thor is a little bit heavier. Thor is a little bit stronger. Probably a lot stronger. So I know there's been a lot of talk about potentially Martin Ford, maybe Eddie Hall. But it seems like they've been really focusing their social media campaign to build up a fight with Tyson and Thor. And I would think when they're doing that, these back and forth on the story, it's calculated. It's intentional. It's intended to sell the fight. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be doing it. So I'm guessing behind the scenes, and we saw that Thor was already looking over and signing a contract, and I'm guessing that contract was with Tyson. Now, if you look at the actual stats, that's where I find this to be pretty interesting. So Thor versus Tyson Fury. They're both almost the exact same height, six foot nine and six foot nine. Um, <laughs> Tyson Fury far outnumbers Thor in number of fights, 33 total fights. Um, and these were real fights, and Thor had four, and those include his exhibitions. They're both the exact same age. They're both 33. Tyson has had 32 wins, while Thor has only had one. Um, neither of them have had any losses. One draw for Tyson and three draws for Bjornsson. Um, 23 KOs for Tyson Fury. It's important to remember that Thor hasn't knocked anybody out officially. Um, 19 stones, 11 pounds, the 23 stones. So I believe Thor outweighs, uh, if we're talking in terms of pounds, Thor outweighs Tyson by 50 to 60 pounds. Um, doesn't have Thor's reach on here. Tyson has an 85 inch reach. They both have an orthodox stance. Gypsy King versus the mountain. So what do you guys think about this being Thor's next opponent? If he does fight Tyson, do you think it's a good matchup? Who do you think would win? Um, it, it'd be interesting to see two guys this big because Eddie Hall was still like six inches shorter than Thor, uh, six or seven inches shorter than Thor. And it's certainly not every day you get two guys that are both six foot nine in the ring. I, I think it'll be an, an interesting fight. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you guys think this is a good matchup or not? Now, next up in the news, Michael Crizzo apparently is in the United States right now. I don't know if this is the first time he's ever been here, but I think this is interesting following the news that he's making the switch to the NPC and the IFBB, um, starting with that Prog Pro and the Prog Pro qualifier. My guess, again, for that show is he's probably going to win the qualifier and then go on to compete in the Pro Show um, that same weekend. But the fact that he's in the United States right now I think is interesting, and I'm kind of wondering if there's a possibility that he moves here while he competes as an IFBB pro. And I know I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but I think it's it's probably pretty safe to assume that he's going to turn pro pretty quickly. I mean, he had already turned pro for the Elite Pro, and he even won the Arnold Classic over there under the Elite Pro banner as a pro, in addition to the Mr. Universe titles and all that stuff that he did um, in Elite Pro. So I, I don't think it's going to be very hard for him to turn pro over here. I don't think it's going to take him very long. And honestly, I think he's going to win that show that same day and then you know compete in the pro the next day. But it's interesting, and I think this is a perfect example of kind of what I've been talking about, how fast these things can move and how fast you could see a guy like Michael Crizzo become a big name in the IFBB here. I mean, he's called out a lot of guys. Um, he called out Blessing. I believe he called out Nick Walker. I think he even called out Hunter Labrada. And he's been he's been calling out all these IFBB pros over the course of you know the past couple years. And at the end of the day, the argument was always, well, if you're so much better than them, come do it. Come compete with them. And now he's doing it. And I think it's going to be cool if he does move to the States in an effort to, uh, or maybe even just get a visa or stay in the States for a while in an effort to compete in more of the shows over here. I think that would be interesting because if he turns pro at this, uh, at this Prague show, there's a lot of shows after Prague between now and the Olympia that he could do. He could jump in a lot of those lineups. And I think we could have a pretty interesting uh, pre-Olympia season if we see Michael Crizzo do a lot of these shows that are coming up. And speaking of shows that are coming up. We just got the competitor list, or at least the tentative competitor list, for the Chicago Pro, which is this weekend. Um, so here is the men's open bodybuilding competitor list so far. I'm guessing there's going to be more names added to this. I wouldn't be surprised if Antoine does this show. I wouldn't be surprised if Ian does this show. Um, but right now, you've got Tim Budishim, Tony O'Burton, James Culberson, Chris D. Domenico, Seth Ingman, Jonas Giatris, Matt Kuba, Andrea Musi, um, Jose Placencia, 
Eric Ramirez, and Manuel Romero. So right now, it doesn't really look like a super deep lineup. The names that stand out to me are um, Andrea Musi, Tim Budishim, Antonio Burton. Andrea Musi has done a lot of shows. Like, you got to give Andrea props. He's been traveling a lot, and he's been competing a lot lately. He's been really uh, putting himself out there on this competitive circuit. Um, so I think that's cool to see. But I would not be surprised at all if Antoine Vaillant or uh, Ian Valier jumped in this lineup. I think either one of those two guys, if they jumped in here, based on this lineup so far, would have a pretty good shot at winning. And I mean, they're already in shape. They're probably holding on to a pretty good amount of conditioning. And there's Tampa coming up. There's Texas coming up. But those are a little bit further away in the future. If they can make it to Chicago, I think one of them would have a really, really good shot at winning here. Now, next up in the news, it looks like Justin Rodriguez has changed his mind. So previously... Justin had said he's not going to be at the Olympia and he's not going to attempt to qualify for the Olympia and that his plans were to shut things down for the rest of the year, take time off to rest in between shows um, and focus on making improvements and actually having an offseason now that he's with his new coach, George Farah. But apparently it looks like he's doing another show based on this latest post. He says, and this was a picture from, I believe, peak week of the Arnold Classic. He says the, the year is not over yet. George Farah and I are working to show a scary nightmare for everybody. Counting me out is a big mistake. So it looks like he's back in. Right now in the point standings, I believe on points, he's still top three, so he could still get to the Olympia on points. But I, I really think that winning a show is the route that he should take to getting to the Olympia. So I'm curious now what show he's going to pick, how far away that show is going to be, and how close that show will be to the Olympia. And I'm also curious to see, now that he's working with George, how different his physique looks um, compared to previously. Because we see what George was able to do with Blessing, and we saw the best version of Blessing that we've ever seen, winning shows like the New York Pro and the Indie Pro. But again, I mean, I think all these storylines have me a little bit excited for these upcoming shows, because while the bodybuilding season has had kind of a slow start, kind of a boring start, honestly, these first couple shows, um, but I think there's some good storylines going into the Olympia. This Michael Crizzo thing, I think, could be really big. Um, you've got Good Vito potentially doing... Um, well, he is doing that Brazil show in September, but potentially earning his pro card before the Olympia. And it just makes things really interesting overall. Now, next up in the news, an update from Phil Heath. So he did an Instagram Live last night where he gave another physique update. Uh, he was kind of posing and flexing and talking about the Olympia commentary gig that he's doing. Um, and Phil looks great here, and this is kind of the confusing part, I think, to a lot of people, the fact that it's now kind of confirmed that he's not going to be competing in the Olympia since he's doing the commentary. He's obviously not going to have time to compete. But he looks really good in this video. He certainly doesn't look like he's downsizing. He certainly doesn't look like he's retired. He certainly looks like he's holding on to quite a bit of size here. Like he's getting ready for something. He looks kind of like the old Phil Heath that we're used to. Or I guess the young Phil Heath would be the more accurate way of describing it. I don't know. I just have a feeling that things in bodybuilding are about to get really exciting in the near future. we got all these storylines. Like I said, you got the potential of Crizzo, Good Vito... Maybe Phil Heath is doing another show. He looks like he's certainly in shape enough to do one. Why else would he be holding on to that kind of size, holding on to that kind of uh, physique at his age if he weren't planning on competing? So we're, we might have a uh, Phil Heath is coming back storyline next year. And I'm here for it. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. That's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet already. Make sure you leave a like um, and click that bell notification icon if you have not clicked it already. As always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out.